Roy Stryker, the man who led Americans to see America. Without him, a time in American history would be lost. Roy Stryker organized and led a team of 11 photographers to bring the Great Depression to America's attention. He left a legacy of over 160,000 photos all held in the Library of Congress before he retired that illustrates the hardships and agony of the Great Depression and still are used to show many generations a time period people could have forgotten. At the start of the Great Depression, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, also known as FDR, created the Resettlement Administration. They had many different divisions. The largest branch was the Farm Security Administration, or the FSA. Roosevelt assigned Rexford Tugwell as head of the FSA. Tugwell and Stryker were friends. He proceeded to hire Stryker as head of the historical department. Roy Stryker worked at Columbia University and even left a legacy there. An economics textbook he made with Rexford Tugwell. Roy Stryker did not only use textbooks for his referring though. He also went outside the real world economic problems that he would have his students solve. That is where he found Arthur Rothstein. He took many of the greatest Farm Security Administration photographs ever. Louise Roskam was a photographer for the FSA. She worked with her husband, Edwin Roskam. They helped document America. Louise and Stryker were friends. She spoke about what his personality was. And he had really good comments about the whole organization as a teacher. But, uh, on the other hand, he enjoyed a fight. He's like a little boy that likes to go out and punch his, his, uh, the other kids. Roy loved a fight, and if people were standing in his way, his greatest joy was to get him out of there. <laughs> Roy Stryker had a huge family in his childhood, six siblings. His dad was always working on the farm. With all this going on, Stryker did not let it soil his love of books and reading. It very well could have. He got all of his books from his older brother who worked at the local school. There are many theories on what caused or sparked the Great Depression. The most common one was the stock market crash of October 29th 1929. From that day forward, America would be in the Great Depression. Two days later, 11 well-known Wall Street businessmen had committed suicide. They weren't just mad, they were devastated by the outlooks of the Great Depression. Everyone was in the beginning of chaos. After that, people were depressed. It felt like an absence of something. The smoke wasn't coming out of the smokestacks and every business had to cut back. The unemployment rate was up to 25% and everyone was just shocked. Roy Stryker hired a diverse team of 11 photographers to bring the Great Depression to America's attention. Two were women and one was an African-American man, at a time where not everyone had the same rights. Stryker had no need to inspire the photographers. What was going on around them was inspiration enough. Dorothea Lang, one of the female photographers, was inspired by the riots in San Francisco. Gordon Parks was one of Roy Stryker's best photographers and he lived in Fort Scott, Kansas. We found an interview with him 
explaining what his first mission was with the FSA. Stryker had handwritten shooting scripts he used to tell the photographers what to look for. He made them send letters to him to report back. One of the photographers did not write very many letters. He was the only one ever fired from the team. At the time, new farming techniques had caused vast destruction and erosion of soils and farmland. While that was going on, a drought caused what we now know as the Dust Bowl. Many families had to leave their homes and move to new land. Some people and families stayed with their homes and tried to keep the dust out. Roy Stryker's team sought out and made many of the Dust Bowl photographs we now know today. Without him and his group, another part of American history could have very well been lost. Many people did not know what it was like in the Dust Bowl, but now many do. In the morning of August 27, 1936, the Forum carried a front page story branding Arthur Rothstein's skull photographs as phony pictures. This headline got to Washington, and the integrity of the FSA's photographs was called into question. Stryker was out of town when this all happened. In the later part of 1936, the Director of Information, John Franklin Carter, left to take a better-paying job. His replacement was a man who had little use for photographs or photographers. This led to Stryker getting two sudden announcements. That he was cut down on staff, and that Tugwell was leaving, which meant that his funding would be cut. When the RA was moved to the Department of Agriculture, which brought a more sympathetic director, who restored Stryker's funding and his team. Through Stryker's hard work and leadership today, anybody can access his legacy of over 160,000 photos. Stryker led the photographers through extreme funding cuts and against Congress to secure their legacy known as the file. Without Stryker's leadership to get the file saved into the Library of Congress, generations to come might not know what the Great Depression was like. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I...